Hello, my name is Matthew Wright. I'm a senior lecturer in the Institute of Sound and Vibration Research, which is one of the academic units in the Faculty of Engineering and the Environment at the University of Southampton. I teach a number of modules, but the one I'm going to be talking about today is for third-year undergraduate students and master's level students, and it's called Musical Instrument Acoustics. It's slightly unusual, in, for an engineering module in that it's in assessed entirely by written essays. What are you looking for in a comparative essay? In a comparative essay where, for example, they're asked to compare and contrast two different instruments, then I'm looking, the fundamental thing we're looking to, for in all essays is evidence of critical thinking. We want to know that they haven't just repeated facts, but that they can sustain an argument and give reasons for the conclusions. So every factual statement, I want to know, first of all, if it's the author's opinion, then it should just be identified as being the author's opinion. But of course, an essay can't just be all opinion. Uh, so any facts have to be referenced or derived in some way if they're more mathematical. I'm always looking for how do they know this is true rather than just believing it. And I want the essay to actually tell me that. And I'd like it to make a sustained argument and be well structured. So it has to have a beginning, a middle and an end. And it has to be a persuasive piece of writing that you can read as a whole rather than a series of disjointed statements. What problems do students usually have? Often students have trouble to begin with until we've done some tutorial work with distinguishing from opinions and reasoned facts and with referencing them. And it can be difficult working out what level of referencing to give, how often to cite sources if you're not familiar with reading scientific literature and seeing the sort of standard practices for doing that. So learning those is very much part of the module. And then there can also be problems with um, structure, with the idea of sometimes it's easy to say things several times without realising you've said it, or to give too much weight to one particular point, so that because it needs to be explained in a lot of detail, or going into excessive detail on one point, and then not allowing time, or space I should say, for other points, because these essays all have a word limit, and that makes it much more of a challenging exercise. There's all, there can also be problems in choosing the level. They have a certain amount of choice in the level at which they can pitch it, whether it's, but if you're going to be writing something that's typical for school children, for instance, then you have to be careful to explain all technical terms that you bring in, and that's probably not going to be appropriate at this level. If you're going to write it at the level of a research monograph, then that's also probably inappropriate unless you are actually um, an advanced researcher in the field. So they will pitch the level somewhere in between. The trouble they sometimes have is maintaining a constant level. So at one stage they may be explaining very simple terms like what sound is, and then later on maybe taking a great deal more technical knowledge for granted to save having to explain it. And how would you suggest students overcome some of these problems? There are a number of things we can do. We always have tutorial sessions after the first essay that they write where we get together in small groups and they read out their essays and we discuss them and very often they'll be surprised at how often I'm stopping them and raising questions about how do you know this is true, why did you say it that way and not like that way. But they also find the act of reading them out loud actually reveals quite a lot about how they wrote it and how it appears to somebody else. So I always recommend that if possible they read their essay out loud before submitting it, preferably to a friend who's maybe doing a different, studying a different discipline. Um, because actually saying it out loud will very often show sentences that don't actually make sense or that are repetitive or don't say what they mean that they said. And of course, 
planning is important. Um, everyone has a different process for writing, and if your process is just to start writing at the beginning and finish at the end, that's okay, but then you need to look back on it and look at the structure and arrange it in the most sensible way, say, have I said this at the right point? Have I already set up the information I need for that? And for most people, they were, they, they, certainly after a few goes, they start to find that at least some sort of rough sketch first, and in some cases quite a detailed plan first, is very helpful. 